This is episode two of From Piano to Orchestra. And today we're going to take the piano sketch that we made in the first episode and turn it into an orchestral piece in our door. So if you haven't seen episode one yet, uh, you could do that first because you'll learn how to make a piano sketch, but you'll also learn about the method that I'm teaching, you know, using something called a micro tasking. And for today, I also want to recommend that you use the MIDI file that I have linked underneath the video, even though you made everything in the first uh, episode by yourself. It's just so that you can have the exact same notes as I have when we work, so you won't get confused about which uh, notes you're supposed to choose if it doesn't look the same as you see on my screen. Right, so the first thing we need to do is open our orchestral template. This is my template with the various instruments in the different orchestral families. You can see woodwinds here, then it's brass, percussion and keys, and then strings on the bottom. But on top here, I made six piano tracks, just like we did in episode one. So that's the first thing you need to do today. Pause the video, make six piano tracks into your template, and then resume the video. The next step is to import the MIDI file into the project. You go here and select the MIDI file that you can download from the description under the video, open it, and it will usually pop up in the bottom of the project like this. So just copy the voices up to the piano tracks like this. So you can see here that the MIDI tracks have the name system that we made in episode one. So now you should just copy them over and find the appropriate track on top here, and then just copy it track by track until the whole section is filled out. So now, I pause the video, import the MIDI, do the naming system, and then resume the video. So now I have the correct naming on all these tracks, and I can just remove the MIDI here and delete the empty MIDI tracks. So the first thing we need to do is to check that everything is okay in the piano sketch. So then I just open it and I just start playing it. Yeah, and the tempo is too low, so I go to 135. And I try again. Great. So just to begin, we're going to start by orchestrating the rhythmic engine because it's going to be the bottom layer uh, upon which we will build all the other voices. And it's nice to have it like clear in the background when we start to choose articulations for the other voices as well. So let's go into the rhythmic engine and just check the notes. Okay, it's A2. So now I have to think, well, which instrument should I should I choose to play the rhythmic engine? And we, we know something about that. We can see that it's down here. So, well, it can be any instrument that has a good range here. But for the orchestral style, Usually it starts with the strings. So just to make it easy today, we're going to choose Shelly for this. So I'm going to select all of them. It starts on bar two, and then I'm going to go down to Shelly and they are here and I copy the line in. And as you can see on screen now, these are the available articulations that I can choose. Depending on your DAW and also your library, they might be similar or not so similar. But I guess you at least have some shorts and some longs, and that's more than enough for this demo. And let's see. Right. That was, hmm, I don't know. Let's change into spiccato and try again. Yeah, much better. And then I also want to make it a little bit softer because it was quite piercing and loud up there. There we go. So, you know what? I think maybe this is a little bit high for Celli just because of the sound of the spiccato samples here. So I'm going to try to move them over to violas instead and just see how that sounds with the same articulation chosen, spiccato. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so now you go into the sketch and copy over all the notes from the rhythmic engine into violas and then choose a short articulation, maybe spiccato or staccato for that one. And once you've done that, come back and resume the video.
Now I'm going to go back to the jelly again, just move them over, copy, but then I'm going to select everything and pull them down one octave. Right, that's better. I'm going to use a little bit of tweak to the velocity of the shorts in the jelly here, lower them more. Yeah, I like that much better. More of a balanced sound. Okay, so copy the voices over to Chelly, go one octave down, turn down the velocity a little bit, and then resume the video. Let's go back to the piano sketch and have a listen. Yeah, right? So I'm going to choose the bass notes here. And they are in octaves, I'm just going to choose the lower part and going all the way down to basses this time. And I'm going to choose a little bit longer articulation than spiccato. So the next one in my list is staccatissimo. Yeah, I think that's a long enough sound. Together with the other strings, it sounds like... That's great. So now it's your turn to move the bass notes down, just a lower part of them. And choose a good articulation for it, so it matches and blends together with the other strings. And once you're done, Come back and resume the video. So remember that we only chose the lower part of the line in the bass section, but we also need to put in these notes that are one octave up. What is an instrument that can play one octave up from basses? And of course, Celli would be easy to choose, but they're already doing the rhythmic engine here. So I'm going to go into woodwinds and I'm going to choose bassoons for this one. And then when I go into the bassoons, I have to see that, hmm, which articulation am I going to choose that is the same as the celli? In the strings they're called uh, spiccato, but here they're just called repetitions. So I choose that and it's the same length. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now you put the upper part of the bass line, you know, the upper octave there, into the bassoons. And you choose a good articulation to blend the sound. Then you resume the video. So even though you made a lot of compositional decisions in the piano sketch, you have to expand upon them now, because maybe you already hear something else happening that is not in the piano sketch. And you're absolutely allowed to include that as well. So I hear some drums. So I think that this bass line can go into uh, timpanis, actually. There. Great. Can you hear that the timpanis are a little bit overwhelming? I think so. So I'm just going to mark them and pull them down a tiny, tiny bit. Oh, much better. Yeah. Okay, so now it's your turn to take the bass notes and copy them into timpanis. Maybe move them up an octave and adjust the velocity so they blend well with the orchestra. Once you're done, resume the video. So when we go back to the sketch, we see there is a run, and I'm going to think to myself, well, what can play runs up there in A4? I'm going to choose this two flutes part here, and I know that the run is going to hit on bar four there, and there I check it. Does it hit on bar four? And it does. Yeah, that's good for now. Maybe you can hear that it's a little bit low. Maybe you would like to have it one octave up. And I think so too, but I'm going to use the piccolo for that. So I'm just selecting the flute notes here, and I find the piccolo, and I copy it over. I select everything and move it one octave up. So this is piccolo by itself. That's good. A little bit more impact on the last notes there. Right, and if I play them together with the flutes, that's good. Okay, so now it's your turn to copy the run from the sketch over to both flutes and piccolo and just separate them by one octave and correct the curve of velocities. And once you're done, come back to the video. Right, so they're not that strong. I'm going to increase the velocity a little bit for the, the run here so they're a little bit more present. That's better. Okay, so now that we have entered this runs, I would like to go into this middle part here 
where we have more or less the, the chord outline. These are three lines, not in octaves, they are different notes you can see. And I think as an adventure track, this would be nice to have in brass. What I suggest that we do is that we use the lower line here in a lower part of the brass family. So I'm going to start with this one. I select all of the A's and E's here and I copy it. So I'm going to go back to the brass section and I think I'm going to choose trombones for this. And I know it starts on bar four and I copy it in here. These are the notes. And I have to choose an appropriate articulation again. I'm going to try with staccatissimo first, just to have a listen. Right, so I can hear that the long notes, they're okay. But these guys here, the shorter ones, they were not so good. So here I have to tr select repetitions instead. That's better. But I think I'm just going to keep three of them because it was a little bit weird with, with four. So to give the trombones a little bit more presence, I'm thinking about copying them down into bass trombones. And now let's just let them play in unison first to see how that sounds. Okay, so what if I take the bass trombones and I copy them or move them one octave down? There they are. And if I play them together now, they sound like this. That's much better. So that's your task now. You go up to the chord section and you choose the lower part. You know, we went up here and we took out these guys and you copy them over to bar four in both trombones and bass trombones. And bass trombones were one octave down. And then do you find your best articulations that you have available? and make it sit in the mix, then you come back. So the next line in the chord section is E, B, and E. And this sounds to me like chord range, uh, sorry, horn range. So I'm gonna go into horns, copy them on bar four, and open them to have a look. So they look very similar to trombones, of course. I'm gonna remove one of these like I did with trombones. And I'm going to choose the same articulation. So it was staccatissimo. And for the short ones, it was repetitions. And then back to here. So you can hear that the trombones are actually overpowering the horns a little bit here. So I want to turn the velocity up a little bit. That was better, but it was maybe a little bit too much. Let's see now. Perfect. Okay, so now you move the next line down into the horns, choose articulations, adjust velocity, and make it sit in the mix before you zoom the video. So the upper section here could easily be put into trumpets, for example, but I actually want to put them in horns as well. So I'm just going to copy it over the four horns that we already put here. Great. So copy the top line down into horns, and adjust it with velocities and everything, and then resume the video. So to end the brass edits for now, we're also going to copy bass trombones into the tuba here. Hmm. I think I wanted to play a little bit louder in the beginning here to give a little bit more of an impact. Okay, so these brass stabs, they need a little bit of help. Uh, and I think I'm going to have a bass drum hit on bar four. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now you add the bass drum on bar four and adjust the velocity so it sits well in the mix, not too high, not too low, then come back. Okay, so let's go back into the sketch and we see that actually this run 
is not as impactful as I would like it to be. It's a little bit tame. So what we can do then is to use more instruments to play the same notes or expand it lower or higher up. So actually I want to use the, the flute MIDI notes here. And I think I'm going to choose the tune percussion for that. And I copy it over to the same bar here. And I'm going to choose glockenspiel or xylophone. I'm, I'm not sure yet. The glockenspiel first by itself, it sounds like this. Xylophone sounds like this. Yeah, I want the xylophone. Much better. It was a little bit too loud though. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to just lower the velocity here a lot so it sits better in the mix much better so now it's your turn if you have some melodic percussion maybe even xylophone in your template then copy the midi notes from the flutes over to the xylophone and adjust the velocity then resume the video so i'm hearing more things now and this is also kind of fun because you can start to paint the picture even broader than you did in your mind when you were uh, when you were writing the piano sketch. So I hear some kind of swell of symbols adding up to the hit on bar four. Oh, that was very loud. And I just like this maybe here. Yeah, that's good. So if you have a suspended symbol in your orchestral template, you can put it in now. If you don't have it, you can also just mark the transition on bar four with a ch, like a piatti or something, just to make the build up a little bit more gradual. Okay, do that now and then resume the video. So in adventure music, it's quite common to use melodic uh, percussion as hits and stabs to mark transitions like we've already been talking about. So I think I'm going to choose uh, tubular bells on bar four as well. So I'm going to record that now. Yeah, good. Just have to adjust it a tiny bit. Maybe a little bit more down in velocity. That's good. Okay, so if you have tubular bells, put a hit on the A note there on bar four and adjust the velocities and everything, and then resume the video. So I hear that the rhythmic engine could use some help. So what I can do now is, for example, go to Celli, and I can copy it over to Piano. Okay, so it's quite soft. I think I'm going to increase the velocity a little bit. And I think I'm also going to go one octave down here. It's just a little bit fuller, especially in the lower register. So I like that. So now if you have piano in your template, copy the notes from Celli over to piano, one octave down, adjust velocities, and then resume the video. So now we come to the impact and we're going to continue a little bit with the rhythmic engine. So listen to what happens between bar two and then after bar four, because not much is happening. And try already now to think about what can I do with the rhythmic engine to make it more interesting after bar four? here. So what I would like to do there is to go into violas because we already helped the celli out a little bit with the piano. So you could go into violas like this and you can think like, hmm. Maybe I can go from A and then also include uh, an E here. It's not much, but it's actually something that is enough within the mix. Can you hear that it, even though it was very subtle, it, it, it feels like it's more is happening. You don't exactly know what it is. It's just like the sound is getting a little bit thicker or full. So what you want to do now is go into the violas 
And from bar four, you move all these notes up to the E here, adjust the velocities if you have to, and then resume the video. So the melody in the track is this very short motif in the beginning, only short notes, very simple. So I could just copy them down and select, for example, violins, but I'm actually going to re-record them now. Good. I would like to copy it over to Violins 2, actually, and let Violins 2 play the same, but then go back into Violins 1 and move them one octave up. So together it sound like this. Okay, so it starts a little bit early. You want it to be human, but you know, not too, too human. So now what you want to do is either use the melody directly from the sketch or you want to re-record it and put the original range of it in violence 2, the same range as in the sketch. But in violence 1, you want to pull it one octave up and then adjust the velocities and the curve of CC1 if you're using the mod wheel or CC2 if you're using the breath controller. And then come back to me. Okay, so what I want to do is actually take um, Violence 2 and copy it over to True Trumpets as well. Okay, so this one together with the strings now sounds like this. Yeah, that's nice. It gives it a kind of a metallic -y, shimmery feeling to the silky strings and it just it increases the whole, you know, listener experience a little bit. So we know that after the melody, we have this little counter run. So we can use these directly and we can copy them from 5 and then 5-2 and think, well, what can do this? Well, a lot of things can do this. I'm going to go with clarinets for now. Five and then two and copy it in. Let's see, maybe like that. That's better. This clarinet can actually be doubled with, for example, oboes, I think. So let's go to oboes two there and go on one octave up. Yeah, that's great. So now you do this. You take the counter melody from the sketch, you put it into clarinets, two clarinets if you have that kind of patch, or just, you know, two single clarinets if you have that, and you adjust the velocity and the timbre of the, of the samples, and then you copy it into two oboes and go one octave up. And once you've done that, resume the video. So let's listen in the sketch how it sounds. Yeah, so it's it's there, but it's not really loud enough now, is it? So I go in and I try to increase the velocity a lot more on oboes and also on the clarinets here. So I want to take the clarinets and I want to put them into Viola's uh, DVC. Hmm, maybe I can also put it into Celli DVC and then go one octave down. That's great. And then I also want these guys in the Celli and I put them into the basses as well. And even one octave down. There we go. Much, much better. So what do you do now is that you copy the voice from clarinet into violas. And then you copy it into celli one octave down. And the last part with only these four notes here, you copy them into the basses and even one more octave down. And adjust the velocities and then come back. While we're in the basses, you can see that there's something missing here. 
it's just we forgot to do more than just these four or three notes that we did in the beginning. So the question now is, well, what happens in the basses here after the beat on bar four? So we have the end of them doing together with the violas and cello there. But what about this range? We could make them do the same as the rhythmic engine, I guess. We could go into these notes in the cello, copy them, and then go down into basses, paste them, and one down octave we go. That was very soft, so we go up. Great. Okay, so now you do that. Copy the voices from the celli in the rhythmic engine down to the bass between uh, bar four and almost up to bar six. So you fill out the lower register and everything is more coherent down there. Once you've done that, come back and resume the video. So let's have a listen from the beginning again. So I hear that these woodwind runs in the beginning, they're not obvious enough. Better, but piccolo even more, I think. That's better. So if you need to do this in your track as well, do it now and then come back. But if you think the balance is fine, you can just continue with me. I think that the melody needs a little bit more help. It's a little bit underwhelming. So I think I'm going to take the melody from violins one and I'm going to copy it into Glockenspiel this time, I think, because it was already xylophone in the intro. So if we move it up to Glockenspiel, it sounds like this. Can you hear that shimmer that now is behind the melody? It just directs the attention more to the melody than before, and sometimes it doesn't even have to be that obvious. So now copy the melody from Violins 1, into a, a track with glockenspiel if you have or any other kind of melodic percussion that is high pitched up there and adjust the velocity so it's almost hiding a little bit behind the, the strings and then once you're done continue with the video and we'll listen to the first run and then we'll listen to the last run I think they should have more of a similar um, sound to them. So I think I'm going to put xylophones in the last part as well. Much, much better. So if you haven't already, then you choose the melody notes from the oboe and you put them into the xylophone again, adjust for velocity. So it, you know, helps them make the run stand out, but not too much. It's good in the mix. And then, once you're done, resume the video. So listen for the impact towards bar 6 there. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Those three notes I want to put into timpani again, I think, to help the transition again. We already did that in the intro, so it's also reminding the listener about something they already know about. There we go. Let's have a listen in the context of the whole track. Oh, it's so much better. Uh, a little bit more velocity tweak. Yeah, great. So now put the bass notes from the tuba into the timpani, adjust the velocities, and once you're done, resume the video. So I don't know about you, but I'm not still really satisfied with this woodwind run. And I think we put it too low. So I'm going to try to move flutes one octave up and piccolo even more one octave up to see if that gets any more clear in the mix. Okay, so the piccolo is way, way too loud now, but it's, it's better. Yeah, and the flutes are also a little bit too loud better so i think that i also want to put some strings in that run to help the flutes a bit because they're struggling a little bit here 
So I'm going to take the two flutes and going to put them into violins one here. Okay, so it was very high up, maybe one octave down. You could actually do it in violins two as well. So in violins two, then we have to go one octave down. You see the notes are starting on A3 here. That's great. Let's listen for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's getting more full. So now you have to do this. You have to go into flutes, copy it, put it into violins one, make it into runs there, and then also copy it into violins two, but bring it down one octave so it matches the melody. Okay, violins one, violins two. Once you've done that, come back and resume the video.